Welcome to another episode of Field Phone Ops. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Swiss Army Field Telephone Model 50, otherwise known as an FTF-50. So sit back and we'll go over the phone. This is a Swiss FTF-50 field telephone. Uh, notice it sort of looks like a EE-8. The reason for that is that after World War II, the Swiss purchased some U.S. radio equipment. And some E8 telephones came with that, and the Swiss looked at them, liked them, said, you know, let's just take and build something similar to this. And this is what they came up with. It sort of looks like a miniaturized E8. These were basically uh, produced and fielded. They were actually produced from the uh, early 50s to the early 60s and was actually in use until the, uh, until the 1980s by all branches of the Swiss military and their civil defense forces. They actually had a... Uh, telephone network set up for all their military and civilian. It was all interconnected so they could, you know, had spots you could hook phone, uh, field phones in and get access to civilian telephone networks on and on and on. It operates basically on a single D-cell battery and it's a local battery system only. Here's your hand crank right here. We'll go ahead and open it up. Nice little clip right here. It's got the flat just like an EEA. Hand set with a push to talk. Um, I'll twist it sideways. You can see it's got Bakelite case. This can actually be removed and taken out. Go ahead and put a battery in it right here. There we go. Um, the binding posts are interesting. This is sort of a, a neat idea. Was when you turn these, the wires, field wires, actually go inside here. These little things right here and are clamped in, so there's no having to bend the field wire around the. Uh, the terminals or find the little cutouts or holes and tighten everything up. You just push the field wire there and turn up the tank and go ahead and tighten it up. Um, they build about 12,000 of these phones. The Swedish people or the soldiers and military personnel use them, really like them. They were lightweight, reliable, and uh, you know, it was, a, it was a good buy. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll hook up the actual EE8 to it and we'll make some phone calls back and forth. Okay, I have wired it to my EE8. We'll make some phone calls. Now, notice this is how the uh, the field wire goes in. It just clamps between these two pieces of metal here, and it's uh, been tightened up using the uh, the binding post tighteners right here. Um, this phone can function as a two-wire field phone, or actually as the old-fashioned uh, one wire to the other phone and the other wire to ground. That's why these terminals are labeled as such. This one with the A on it right here would be the one that you connect to ground. This would be the wire that ran to your other field phone. It operates like that. We'll go ahead and I guess the first call we'll make, I'll go ahead and turn it around so the base support will call from the E8 to the FTF-50. You can hear it rings, um, not real loud. Um, there's no manual adjustment for the uh, for the bell. I think the only thing that's possible is probably to go in like you do with an EE8 and put some cloth or paper or something inside the bell compartment to help, you know, deaden it. So th this may I need to take this apart. This may have something in there deadening the bell, but that's how loud it is. So it's it's definitely easy enough to hear. Okay, now we'll do the call back from the FTF 50 to the E8. Not real loud either. I have a suspicion it's not a very big uh, magneto under, but it is usable and ringable. Interesting thing about this, we'll do a, a quick audio check. Test one, two. Test one, two. Good audio. Um, I first tried this using a TA312, and uh, the TA312 would ring this, but this would not ring the TA312 which is sort of a common problem you come across on some of the TA-312 has got a real massive ringing bell on it. It takes a lot of power to run it. So there are a lot of phones, especially some of these European phones, that will not, I mean, won't ring it. You pick it up, talk back and forth, the audio works good, or the 312 can call the phone, and it works. It's just that the 312 won't take a call from it. So that's, that's one of the issues. This phone should work with all the phones I've done videos on, all the two wire field phones, with the exception of, like I said, the issue with the... Uh, the TA312, the audio is loud and clear. 
handset right here. Uh, got a clip on it right there, so you can clip it on that. Standard push to talk handset. Pretty much it, like anything else. You want to make sure you take the batteries out of the field phone when you're done using it, because that seems to be the main downfall of them. They rot easily. Like I said, they're interoperable, and it's a, it's a good unit. It was not that expensive. It's cheaper than buying a TA312. That's what I'd like to recommend to a lot of people. If you see a lot of these, especially these European phones out there, these different phones, lots of times they're a lot cheaper than a TA312. We'll do the same thing. They're all interoperable, so, so there you go. So this was a Swiss field phone model 50, also known as an FTF50. Thanks for watching.